Hey guys, uh, so I told you I'd make a video about the LED para parallax thing? Multiplexing, I'm not sure why I said parallaxing. But I told you I'd make a video explaining some of the code I used and how I kind of achieved it. Well, uh, coming up I've got a bit of a screencast where you can see me going through the code and explaining a few bits of it. I'm not a huge code junkie, so I can't explain all of it to you because basically I wrote that over like two weeks so me remembering every single step is a bit difficult but I'm going to include the code in the description so that you can download it and look at it yourself and play around and see how it works now there is a, a real-time clock included in that line, in the in the code so if you don't have one it's going to be difficult for you to test everything out you can remove all of that and just use uh, the Arduino to keep track of the time by updating the, uh, the time every time 1,000 milliseconds goes through. And that's kind of an easy way of doing it, but it's not very accurate, so you might want to try something else. The real-time clock's like seven quid, so you could just buy one of those. Um, so I'll get over to the, the code now, and you can take a look. Right, so I said I would show you some of the code here. So. This is it as it stands now. It's still a work in progress and actually it's pretty messy and I've sort of mixed up a few things. So let me just scroll down and show you everything there is. So it's quite a lot of code and I imagine that switch statements aren't the most efficient and I'm mixing it up with if statements as well. So let me just start from the top. So I'm importing a couple of libraries here. One is the real time clock library and one is the wire library and that's just so I can interact with the Arduino pins and the other one is so I can interact with the board that I bought which is not a real time clock uh, and it cost me about seven pounds and it means that will keep the time rather than the Arduino and uh, it loses like two seconds a year so it's quite accurate uh, so if I start off here you can see that there are a number of pins out and those are the ones where the power's going through and these are the ones where it's coming out. So I'll show you again on the diagram in a second. But I've also got this repeated here. It's because I've mixed up my code and as it develops, I forgot to change some certain variables to other bits. So they're just staying in there for now. Now you'll see that I've got some ints here, hours, minutes and seconds, just so I can keep track of the time. And we've got a Boolean for PM, because I need to know whether it's AM or PM. And uh, there's some button state stuff here as well, and two or pass. Two or pass is really important with the word clock, because I need to know whether it's 22, a say two, or 20 past two, because I can't uh, show that in a visual way, I have to show it just using the, the LEDs. So it's just one or two or pass. Now, if, uh, if you look at those things here again, these arrays uh, of all the pins that I'm using, I'll just bring over the diagram again. Now you'll notice there are there are eight different numbers here and there are four here and they correspond with the LEDs on the diagram here. So you've got four going down and eight going across and they represent all of the LEDs that I'm going to be using in my work clock. So if I go a bit further down there's some RTC setup just here and this is where I change all of the LEDs in a for loop just so that they're all off. Uh, it's refreshing the screen there, so it's the same thing. Now, I did put some button stuff in here, which I'm not really using at the moment. So this is just kind of old code that's stopped there. Uh, so this is just part of the setup loop here. If you know anything about Arduino, you know that uh, you have a setup and a loop function there. So, and they, the loop function runs over and over and over again, and the setup runs once. So we get, uh, get the time from the RTC at the start of each loop. And then if we go a bit further down past all my crappy comments where I've ruined the code a bit. Uh, I start off looking at the minutes and then I'll look at the, the hours there. So I've pulled in hour 24 now dot hour and that just it just gets the the hour number from the real time clock. I need to know whether it's uh, because it's pulling out a 24 hour clock I need to know whether it's above 12 or below 12. So if it's above 12, it's PM. If it's below 12, it's AM. And that's what this function here does. And it changes PM from false to true, depending on what happens. 
and then there's some delays in here and it refreshes the screen. This is just so that uh, it can take advantage of that persistence of vision effect that I, I told you about. So I set the delay up at the top here to 1000. I just find that's a, a good number to have. Other people use other numbers, but this one seems fine to me. Uh, if you change the delay, it will change the brightness of the LEDs as well. So you might want to look at doing that. But for me, it's fine at the moment. Uh, this, this function here looks at whether it's to or past. So if the minutes are greater than 32, then it's going to be past the hour. And the minutes are under 59 then it's definitely past the hour. So two or past is one there. And this is setting that LED, which I can show you on here actually. So that LED is pin out. I can't remember what pin out is actually. Pin out is <laughs> the four. Okay, let's go back. So pin out number two. So it starts at zero in an, in an array. So you've got zero, one, two. So it's setting that one to low and it sets 0, 1, 2 to high. So it's going to set this LED on, I believe. I might be completely wrong. We'll see. Anyway, I'll make this code available so you can so you can download it. Now this is a bit where it gets a bit complicated because I've had to use a lot of if statements. So if minutes are under if if minutes are greater than two and minutes are less than seven, or minutes are greater than 52 and minutes are less than 59 we're going to put we're going to turn five minutes on that's the five minute led and it carries on and it goes through all these iterations this was a bit fiddly to figure out actually i made a few mistakes here so that when it knocked over to another minute occasionally the wrong leds would be on or they wouldn't turn off quickly enough and so you'd see the wrong ones at the wrong time. And it continues down for all of the minutes here. So this is every one of the minutes that, that are possible. Uh, if we go a bit further down, you can see that I'm, uh, I'm setting PM on or off here. So if PM is true, so if it is PM, then I turn on the PM LED. Otherwise, it turns on the AM LED. And then there's a delay and it refreshes screen. So it turns them off after every one of these things. And then we get to the hours, which I've used a switch statement for. Uh, so if hours, because we got that earlier on, if it's zero, then it will turn these ones on. So if it's zero, that's 12. And if it's one, it turns one on. Now remember, I used that function up the top there to look at the 24 hour clock and convert that into 12 hours by figuring out whether it was over 12 or under 12. And so we continue down here, and if it's two or past, it does all these things as well. So there's quite a lot here. <laughs> and then again, we refresh the screen and create a delay. Oh, void increment time doesn't need to be there anymore. That's a bit of a, a legacy bit of code there that I don't use anymore. So that's basically it. I'm gonna make this available um, for people to download if they want to. Uh, I haven't explained it really well, but mainly that's because I haven't finished it. But I'm sure you'll have your own opinions and perhaps you'll be able to finish it yourself. Right, uh, sorry about that. I know I didn't explain it very well, but if you've got any comments, questions, you can just post them here and I'll get back to you or you can download the code and play around with it yourself. If you find that you've improved it, because I have used lots of switch statements and uh, if statements, so it could be really inefficient code, I don't know. But take a look. If you think it's useful, let me know. If not, then let me know as well. But don't be too harsh, because it's my first go at using that Arduino stuff. So thank you very much.